what is going on YouTube? It is your boy, Faithful to God. And we're going to be discussing a recent live stream that was hosted by Sister E, in which she had a conversation with Benaya Israel on Richard Katz, the infamous Richard Katz, the PhD Richard Katz with the H capitalized. But <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it there. I uh, certainly want to have a mature and cordial conversation about this topic. But uh, with that being said, I would like to introduce the gentleman who was responsible for blowing the lid off the Richard Katz fiasco, our good friend Abu. Abu, say hello to the audience. Good afternoon to everyone listening. I'm looking forward to having this conversation. So uh, Abu, if you could, can you kind of give the audience a insight into what happened? Give them a, a, a brief summary of what we're about to show. Okay, so, you know, I'm sure everyone who's going to be watching, just about everyone is familiar with the whole uh, controversy over Richard Katz, where Kelly Richardson and his cousin uh, unveiled the scholar that they felt, you know, settled the matter of, of the pews. Uh, this secret scholar, you know, basically co-signed every position they, they wanted a scholar to take. And then as we looked into it, it turns out this scholar didn't exist. It was supposed to be a Tel Aviv-based Hebrew professor of Hebrew linguistics named Richard Katz. Uh, you know, it was quite the firestorm when, you know, we revealed that he didn't exist. And uh, by and large, a lot of people that are sort of on the periphery of uh, Kelly Richardson and Benaya, excuse me, I'm forgetting, Kelly Richardson and Brown uh, were somewhat silent on the issue. You know, some of us wanted them to speak out, but whatever the case, you know, no, no harm, no foul. But so last night, Kelly, uh, Sister E had Benaya on, and he said that he finally wants to address the subject. And he basically presented what they felt, or at least what they presented as the definitive case for the existence of, of Richard Katz, the definitive refutation of those of us who say that, you know, that he didn't exist. And uh, what's interesting, and I'm not sure if I would say ironic, but sad, is he basically repeated an argument that we've already addressed months ago, literally months ago. And uh, if we can, I'd like to, if, can we show the comment from uh, Jonathan Soko? Because we were discussing this on Facebook and, uh, you know, basically on the heels of Sister E's show or, or her discussion with Benaya. And uh, Jonathan Soko made a comment, which I think really captured, you know, my feeling in this whole thing. Ah, yes, perfect. So he states, you know, they either do not listen to all of the videos addressing their foolishness or they pretend you never respond. I always think the best of people, but they are really, they really are pushing it. Now, this... Uh, it, it captured a lot of, of what my feeling was in this regard, um, because I have to say, after watching the discussion that Sister E had with uh, Benaya, I, uh, it, it, I, I felt sad on a certain level. I, I would have preferred that Sister E and Benaya stayed out of it because I, I have a certain respect for them. And, you know, and by the way, I did not implicate either one of them in this whole cat's controversy. So, I would have preferred that you know they, they stayed out of it or, or if they got involved just handled it honestly and and in a proper way so you know when as i watch this discussion i have to say you know i'm going to try to be as charitable as i can and so the most charitable i can say most charitable thing i can say is that on a best case scenario they were employing a very bad argument which showed a stark unfamiliarity with the controversy. That's the, the most charitable thing I could say, precisely because, you know, Benaya puts forth an argument that has already been addressed months before he put it forth, because it basically mirrors the argument of that gentleman who's known uh, colloquially as the plumber. I forget his real name. Uh, but that's the best case scenario, the worst case scenario. And, you know, God help us. I, I hope this isn't the case, but the worst case scenario is, is deliberate deception. And, you know, you know it, it's, and that's why this is saddening because, you know, I, I've, it, within this uh, spectrum of people that we deal with, I've always said that I have great respect for Benaya. I think he's a gentleman and I have maintained a respect for Sister E. I know we may be discussing in the future the unfortunate turn that she's taken. Uh, oh, and by the way, um, in a recent discussion that we had about Sister E, I had, in an attempt to try to distance her from some of the more unfortunate aspects of 
these discussions. I had made the remark that I feel, I had echoed Berean in saying that I feel she's being uh, influenced and even manipulated by others. And uh, it, it came to my knowledge that uh, she took offense to that. And, uh, you know, even though I wasn't trying to insult her when I said that, but the be I bring that up here because the best case scenario here is that she's again being influenced and, by manip and manipulated by people. If she honestly thinks that this is a good argument, uh, it's indicative of the influence that others have on her and the way they might be manipulating her because honestly the argument is terrible but let's go through it and we'll address it i would like for the first time to address this richard katz uh uh, uh i don't even know what to call it i call it foolishness i mean yeah. this richard katz foolishness yeah and so if, if if you don't mind sister e i would like to oh, share yeah. my screen and what i'm gonna do is family is if you're in front of your computer, I want everybody that's listening in the, in, to this live, everybody that's listening to this live, open up your web browser. We are going to shut this Richard oh. Kent nonsense down right now. And we're not, and we're going to stay in bounds because, uh, you know, I do want to honor, you know, people's uh, privacy. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick to what was released publicly by Richard Katz himself. So I'm going to stick to what was released publicly by Richard Katz himself. And we're going to take a look at this and, and then we're going to talk on the tail end of this about how you got sucked in, right? Because that's, that's another, another uh, discussion point because some of us got sucked in and we started saying some things and I'm sitting over on the sideline and I, I have to admit, I do have a little bit more um, insight than, you know, most that, you know, most folks, but at the same time, I, you know, I'm looking at, I'm like, you know, this, this ain't, this is foolishness. This, you know, why are people even listen, listening or even entertaining this, you know, yeah. and you know, it's just kind of bubbled up. So movies coming out, we talked about the church. Let's go ahead and, and, and nip this thing in the butt. So let me pull up, hang on a second. Let me pull up my, um, my browser. Okay. All right. So everybody go to Google. You're going to do this together. Everybody go to Google. So the question on the table is, you know, Richard Katz a made up in a uh, guy like did somebody did we, uh, you know, come up with some IPs and I, I don't, I don't even know what that whole story is about, but something weird about IPs and, and stuff to, to make up a guy like we have, like, we got time to sit down. That's, I mean, that's what, I guess that's what's frustrating. Yeah. We got time to sit down and make somebody up all this research we're doing, but we got time to sit down and make somebody up. All right. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop commentary. So everybody go to Google. Type in Richard Katz, R I C H A R D. And we're right now, we're just, just going to validate that Richard Katz is who he says he is using his own publicly available information. Okay. So type in Richard, R I C H A R D. I'm not typing because I, you know, as soon as I start typing, you're going to see the, the search thing. And I'm just trying to hold off on that. And then space Katz, that's K A T Z. Space University of Georgia. Richard Katz, University of Georgia. And so your screen should look like my screen. Can you see my screen, Sister E? I can see your screen. And you see what it says? It says Richard Katz is a trained, what does it say, family? Linguist. Linguist. All right. Specializes in language history and how grammatical features comes about. He earned his PhD from the University of Georgia. So for this exercise, we're just gonna go one place. Like I said, I'm gonna honor his, his, um, um, his privacy. So I'm gonna click on the link that says Linguistics University of Georgia. This is the University of Georgia's webpage, right? You'll see it UGA at the top. Department of Linguistics, you see it? Franklin College of Arts and Science, University of Georgia, right? And so on this page, like for, for those people that have gotten their master's and their doctorates from uh, University of Georgia, like they'll list their names, like, and they'll list it by the year. And so I just want to show you that this information has been out for, for a minute. Um, let's see. Because I believe he was a 2016. Yep. So there he is. Richard Katz, PhD, 2016, linguistics. And this was his dissertation. So when they got, when you apply for your doctor, you're doing the dissertation. At least that's what the case was in 2016. So I want people to take a moment, <laughs> look at it, take it all in, 
you have just seen Richard Katz, and this is based off of the public information that he himself has released. And we're cross-checking that with the University of Georgia. So we're on the University of Georgia's website. So family, at this point, no one should be bringing up Richard Katz as some oh, sort man. of fake dude. This is utter foolishness. And if I could talk to my brothers and sisters just for a moment. Is it okay if we step in here? Yeah, let me, actually, I'm, I'm going to switch it over to my, um, let me see if I can switch it over to PowerPoint. I guess I got to stop sharing. Hang on, family. Is it showing up, Sister Eve? Yep, it is. Okay. But just to kind of finish up our thoughts on Richard Katz. So everyone in the chat, everyone on this live, you have, if you participated in the exercise, you have just confirmed with your own eyes Correct. that Richard Katz is who he says he is. You have just confirmed with your own eyes that my cousin Majors did not make him up, right? You have just confirmed with your own eyes that anyone that came out and said that this was made up this was utter complete foolishness if you got caught up in this right and you maybe you start to start to say some things maybe you started to uh uh get get fooled by by the people that 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 took you for a ride because literally that's what they did they took you for a ride correct if you got caught correct. up on that and you said some things you need to send my cousin an i am uh, email or a text and apologize straight right. up. I mean, if you man enough, woman enough to say things like, you know, well, he need to do this and he need to do that, right? To condemn the man when really at the end of the day, he was, he was doing the noble thing, right? Cause he was, if, you know, if you guys don't know, and if, I guess if, if somebody, you guys are kind of catching this and like, what are you guys talking about? Right? So if you guys don't know, this is, this is kind of what, what happens, right? When we went and started investigating the church, and we reached out to, you know, various professors, you know, because we started off with Hebrew. And we started off reaching mm -hmm. out to Hebrew pro professors and saying, hey, what do you think about this? Hey, what do you think about this? And one after the other, you know, they were like, oh, they look like Hebrew. Oh, they look like Hebrew. Oh, they looks like Hebrew, right? One and then we the started other. sharing the, the professors that were weighing in on them. You know, someone from the community, you know, we believe it's, you know, my, my, my money is, is on, you know, people from the, the apologetics community because there's a pattern. There was a, there was a pattern that occurred. They, the, the universities received a call from someone from the apologetics community followed by a tax. I mean, that's literally how it happened. Someone from the apologetics calls in, then the attacks on the professor starts, right? Oh, wow. So, Wait a minute. Go back. Go back. Stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go back. Richard Katz, or is this someone else? Uh, it was, it was uh, bo both Richard Katz and oh man, who's the first? Bunis, Professor Bunis. So they wait a minute, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna go back to that point. Mm -hmm. So the UA community calling up there and then attacking them. The pattern isn't, and my cousin Kelly pointed this out. the The first call that goes out is somebody from the from the apologetics community calls and reaches out, and it's a, it's it's like a um, like a scout, right? He calls. He says, hey, you know, I'm just wondering if this is you, you know, um, uh, uh, you know Mr. Uh, William Brown, you know, he's, he's, he's uh, you know, quoting you on, on these, these references. Um, just wanted to make sure it's, it, it conf you know, confirms you, da, 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 da. And once they confirm, the next phone calls that followed up were attacks. The, the attacks uh, centered around, there were calls that were made directly to the, the university's administration saying, Hey, you know, you guys are, he's, he's working with, uh, you know, black Hebrew Israelites. When in fact, this is an exercise to, in, in, this is an exercise into the history of a church, of a Baptist church, not a Hebrew, ba not a Hebrew church, a Baptist church. And oh, so wow. they were literally calling these universities, you know, attacking the professors attacking the professors, trying to get them, you know, uh, fired or, or, or whatever. And then, so that's why, you know, Bunis immediately after they called his administration, he does a, a, a 360 or a 180. Wow. <laughs> it's like, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bowing out, you know, y'all, you know, good luck to you. And you, you think about it, you know, I, I hate to throw the, throw the whole race card, but, you know, you know, he's not... Like I, like, I, like I would tell people, like, um, you know, they're not going to make this their Alamo. 
You know what I mean? Like they're not going to die on the sword for, uh, you know, these folks that these random guys that called them asking them to interpret something like they're not going to do that. So, I, and I understand that. Right. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. I, I wanted to chime in momentarily because obviously we're going to finish playing this. But so far, I, I'm noticing that there seems to be. Uh, it, so it's two things, right? Either they actually believe what they're saying when we've demonstrated this to be totally incorrect, totally false, or they're being willfully deceptive and they're trying to poison the well with false information to try to make it seem like what they're saying is true. Like that, that's actually what happened. Yet we have videos on my channel that you've made and, and that I've made that have demonstrated this to be completely false. You know, if we could, can we, so we don't lose the audience, can we play the clip that you made in December, I believe it was late December of last year, where you actually addressed the claim about uh, the Richard Katz in Georgia, showing that that was not Richard Katz, the person that they were purporting was this Tel Aviv-based professor. Mm -hmm. After that, I'm going to show some emails from Bunis demonstrating that he was uh, never bullied or never, you know, I don't know what, what Benaya was attempting to try to angle for with that, but that's just, that's just false. Right. All right. So this is from a video that I believe we made right at the very end of December. It was the gentleman who's sort of uh, popularly or colloquially called the, the plumbers, a gentleman named Jermaine Howell. He had presented an identical argument and Dante Fortson plugged in. And so we're picking up this video that we made about four and a half months ago, uh, which is identical to uh, Benaya's first argument about, look, you know, we found Richard Katz, he's in Georgia. Uh, so we're going to play that and you'll see that the response to Jermaine Howell and Dante is identical to the response to Benaya now regarding that first part of his argument. Now, I know Dante wants to say that he wasn't taking a position on the subject, but, you know, insinuating the Berean might be in on some sort of conspiracy is pretty strong language. And then Dante shared this video. So let's look at a, a salient clip from that video, which Dante felt was interesting enough to share. This clip will run for slightly over two and a half minutes. Here we go. But I just want to know, you know, you got Abu. Faithful to God, you got Berean, then you got, Berean said he, you know, he tried to give a man uh, $300, a private investigator or something to say to $300 to find this Richard Katz guy. And he said that the real, and nobody could find him. This is what really, this is why I'm making a video, because nobody could find him, right? And he even, Berean, Berean even said that the guy came back and told him that the man don't exist. So, here's my thing. I'm plumber. During the first video Maria made, after Abu's video, talking about it, while he was talking about it, I got on my computer at that very moment, and I typed in Richard Katz, linguist. And the very first thing that popped up on the screen was a Richard Katz PhD. In language. And then I looked in the comment section and there was two other people that said they found it too. While Berea's talking. So my, my question is, how is it? Now, I'm not saying that that's the guy. I'm not saying the guy I found is the guy. But he's right there in Atlanta. Uh, he's a Jewish guy. He's involved in the uh, uh, Jew, in, 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 in a Jewish congregation, and it looked like to me like maybe even a, a Jewish school, right? <laughs> and he taught, he's teaching uh, some kind of language in the school. I don't know if it's Hebrew or English or whatever, but, and he had a PhD. He's a linguist. <laughs> so how is it? Me, little old me, a plumber, can barely even work this technology. I can get online and I can find a Richard Katz, PhD, in, in, in language, a linguist.
But Abu can't find one. Faithful to God can't find one. Berean can't find one, and neither can Berean's private investigator. Berean, I, I don't think he's really a private investigator. So my question is this, what's really going on? What's really going on? Is so this is what the man in the video was referred to. A guy with the same name who got a PhD in linguistics from the University of Georgia in 2016. Well, the University of Georgia's linguistics department actually posts the doctoral dissertations of recent PhDs. And when you scroll down to the year 2016, you can find a link to the relevant gentleman's doctoral dissertation titled The Resultative in Gothic. When you click on that link, you get a PDF of that dissertation. The piece is on the Gothic language, which is a Germanic language. It's not a Semitic language. Moreover, Hebrew is not mentioned even once throughout the nearly 300 pages of this dissertation. If you can find the gentleman's LinkedIn page, you'll see that the gentleman's BA and MA, let's just say his bachelor's degree and his, his master's degree, were in English. So none of his degrees pertain to Hebrew. On top of that, when he lists the languages that he has at least some proficiency in, he lists Spanish and German, but he interestingly does not list Hebrew. At this point, thinking this gentleman is relevant to the controversy over Brown's cat's character, you know, the cat's character introduced by Brown, it's, it's an indication that the people pushing this as a possibility aren't thinking very deeply on the question. We're not just talking about any man named Richard Katz with a PhD. We're talking about an alleged professor of Hebrew who supposedly teaches at a university in Tel Aviv, pointing to a guy in a completely different continent whose various degrees did not pertain to Hebrew and who might not even have a meaningful proficiency in Hebrew is frankly unhelpful. So no, this is not an adequate reply to the point that there is no trace of the Tel Aviv-based Hebrew professor named Richard Katz, nor does it cast doubts on what Berean shared about a former marshal telling him that the man does not exist. Okay, so that pretty much, that, that three and a half month old video serves as the response to Benaya's appeal to the exact same guy. And notice that we looked at that exact same page from the linguistics department of the University of Georgia that Benaya pulled up, you know, and we actually looked at his, his, his dissertation. So to, to clarify what was said there, the guy has a bachelor's degree in English. He has a master's degree in English and his dissertation was on Gothic, which is a Germanic language. So, you know, it's, it's Germanic languages all the way through. He's not a Semiticist. None of his degrees are in Hebrew. Moreover, he's not based in Tel Aviv. So again, we weren't asking for just any guy named Richard Katz, but we were asking for was what we were saying we couldn't find any evidence of was a Tel Aviv based professor of Hebrew named Richard Katz. Right. Benaya, just like Jermaine Howell before him, reached for a guy in a completely different continent who does who is not a professor of Hebrew. That guy is emphatically not a professor of Hebrew. So for that reason, it's a terrible argument. And you know, so even in a best case scenario, it, it one is left to wonder how carefully Benaya considered the argument and you know, both our argument and his own. Right, right. And uh, if we could, let's address the Boonis allegation, because this is now the unteamed time that someone from that side has made the allegation that Boonis was purportedly bullied. Uh, it, it What's funny is it, it went from speculative to, to venative, you know, like originally it was, you know, Brown and Kelly saying things like, I don't know, they, they could have, you know, uh, written to his administration or something like that, you know, and now all of a sudden, so it was speculative then, now all of a sudden they're just declaring that that's what was, that's what happened with zero evidence, you know, it's absolutely baseless. So uh, uh, something to keep in mind also is, you know, at another point in the show, Sister E had said that we used the cat's controversy to get away from Bunis, you know, to sort of distract from what Bunis originally said. Benaya basically alluded to something similar. He said, you know, uh, that we caused Bunis to make a 180 degree turn. Now, all of this is preposterous and this has come up previously. One of the things that I would ask, and it's very important is, because keep in mind, all they ever showed from Bunis originally was a fragment of an email, you know, and they totally misrepresented him. But if they're saying that he took one position before people contacted him and then changed his position 
why don't they show what his position was before you know any of that contact the, see the, the reality is, is they badly misrepresented Bunis. they claimed that Bunis endorsed an entire sentence in the solitreo script but they have no evidence of him ever doing that they right. claimed that in a vacuum and they misrepresented him and that's what he said and no there was no bullying involved but go ahead right in fact uh, before i play this clip i, I do want to point out that it's interesting too that Benaya tried to give a reading that went left to right, not right to left as Hebrew is supposed to be read, but rather left to right. And that somehow Bunis, an actual professor of Hebrew, was going to endorse such a reading, you know, that uh, take a grasp of Yah Israel with a bass voice. But, uh, you know, that's besides the point. Let's go ahead and pick it up in this video here. This is actually going to show the email, the correspondence that you had with Bunis. So right, here we go. Give me a moment. What's interesting? After having listened to We Woke Now's baseless assertions, allow me to introduce factual evidence that reflects reality. On your screen is the correspondence that took place between Abu and David Bunis on December the 13th of last year. And it reads, Dear Abdel Masi, thanks for replying. Yes, your suggestion about seeing the sin and Lamed and the rest unclear sounds right. Notice that David Bunis does not endorse the position that We Woke Now and Boom Church initially tried to put forth in the video from November of last year. So what's relevant here is the, the date. December 13th was well after these accusations because they claimed that, that Bunis, originally they were claiming Bunis was harassed sometime around December 3rd. And they based this entirely, this whole narrative was based on a single email from someone who was not associated with us who was, a, he's a, a, an educator down in Virginia, I believe. Uh, he had mentioned Hebrew Israelites peripherally because his students had made that connection. And, and so they built this whole narrative about harassment, which was completely baseless. And, and by but, the way, it was, it was via email. It wasn't an yeah, actual phone call. Yeah, nobody email. called it. There's no evidence of anyone calling Bunis or his university or anything like that. This is a narrative that they made up, you know, and they just throw it out there. Uh, but <laughs> so... The thing was, that was supposed to have happened like sometime around December 3rd, the harassment. But here, you know, it's 10 days later and I'm still having cordial correspondences with Bunis, you know, it's... Well, can, can I just chime in too? Can, can I just read the, the whole thing? So it says, uh, Dear Abdel Masi, thanks for replying. Yes, your suggestion about seeing the sin in Lamed and the rest unclear sounds right. I'll pass on your reconstruction of the possible Quran phrase to my colleague to see what he thinks. As to my blank roots, we were originally in blank and later moved to blank, which, as you probably know, today hosts people from a wide variety of countries. And then the rest has uh, been edited out, was uh, certainly the same, at least once upon a time. All good wishes, David. This is David Bunis having a very respectful, cordial correspondence with you. It, it, so you started off talking about something relevant to the pews, but then it segues into a very kind of off the cuff, very uh, almost almost uh, you know personable email, right? Where he he's kind of going over uh, maybe some of his uh, uh, you know personal life or whatever the case is. But needless to say, nothing in here is demonstrating that one he was bullied. You know that's their false allegation, the one that they made up basically to try to justify why Bunis uh, uh, basically shot down their assertions about uh, the purported reading that he never actually endorsed, right? The uh, take a grasp of Yah Israel with a bass voice. You know, that, that seemed to be Benaya and William Brown's initial uh, reading. No, that was absolutely their original. Their, 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 that was the claim that they made that Bunis had endorsed that, that he endorsed an entire sentence in the Solitario script. It was absolutely false, you know, and they created this narrative of harassment to just distract from it. That's one of the great ironies here is there's so much project, pro, projection when dealing with this crowd. And I'm not saying it's necessarily deliberate on Sister E's part, but it certainly is deliberate on the parts of uh, Kelly Richardson and William Brown. They are the ones who tried to distract from the fact that they badly misrepresented Bunis and they, the distraction they used was this false narrative of people harassing Bunis. And yet now they're accusing us of trying to distract from, you know, the, the Bunis controversy and what Bunis originally said. So, you know what I was thinking? We should probably show very quickly the email 
where Bunis is clear that it was William Brown who had misrepresented him, that the, uh, mm. the person that actually had mis misrepresented his, uh, uh, what could we call it? His opinion, his... Uh, yeah, his, his, his interpretation of the markings on the pews. Yeah, they, they attributed to him an entire sentence in the Solitreo script when he said nothing of the sort. You know? It says, Dear Mr. Nemo Minute, thanks for your email. When I expressed a few hesitant words about what was written on the church pew, I had no idea that it would help cause such a fur locally and maybe beyond. When I first saw the inscription, I thought it might be Arabic script. Then after seeing some interpretations by others, it seemed to me that one might be able to read the Hebrew word Yisrael, that is Israel, in it. I am far from sure about this, nor do I think that what seems to be some kind of inscription on the pew is in Solitreo script or is necessarily in Hebrew at all. Judging from the reactions I've been receiving, my words were rather misrepresented on William Brown's program. Only part of our email correspondence was presented, and even that seems to have been partially misinterpreted. So here, Bunis is very clear that his words were misconstrued. In fact, can we say, if we can just go back, uh, looking at your relevant email, the, the one from the 13th, the only part that he was able to see what could allegedly be any kind of characters resembling Hebrew were the Sin and the Lamed, correct? That's all that he saw that he could potentially make out if, if one were to uh, make an appeal to the shape of the, uh, uh, the markings. Yeah, the Buna suggested that he, he felt that he saw two characters and he attempted to uh, suggest very hesitant, hesitatingly a word based on those two characters. Ironically, uh, Kelly Richardson and his crowd have proposed all sorts of other things for those characters, for those markings. Uh, for example, where Bunis thought he saw a, a sin, that's precisely where Benaya felt that he saw two heads. And later on, where uh, Ephraim Isak uh, uh, suggested that maybe there could be a, uh, a is sat and a is ha, you know, so it's, it, it's, it's a testament to just how open to interpretation these markings are. And Bunis also said that. He also said that at best, you know, these uh, markings are open to interpretation. Indeed. And uh, now that we've set the uh, record straight, so Bunis was not bullied. He continued cordial correspondence with Abu after the fact, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and this is after he had, in fact, in fact, if I could show it one more time, let's show some of the dates. So here, this was on the 13th, correct? Now, mm -hmm. the one where he is correcting William Brown is on the 3rd of December. Mm -hmm. And even and before that, he, they even sent them, he even uh, uh, wrote to Brown and said that he didn't think it was Solitreo in November, late November. So this was on the 3rd of December, and the previous one was also on the 3rd of December. So this was the same day, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the 3rd of December, he wrote to me and to this other gentleman who had written to him. And the other gentleman mentioned Israelites once, and that's where Kelly Richardson, you know, and his crowd in a, you know, sort of desperate attempt to take attention away from the fact that they misrepresented Bunis, created this whole narrative of, of you know, uh, Bunis was harassed, you know, and it was based entirely on one person mentioning Israelites once in his email, you know. And now they've changed it to uh, calling his university. It's completely baseless, you know? They right. just throw these claims out there without evidence, yeah. By the way, when they claimed that Bunis was bullied, was that in December, the first time that they ever proposed Bunis being bullied? Yeah, it was in early December, and uh, it was right after we had broken open the fact that they had misrepresented Bunis. So yeah, it was, it was around December 3rd that uh, we, started showing definitively that they had misrepresented Buna. So something just a few days after that, they came up with this narrative where, you know, we had somehow harassed uh, Bunis or poisoned the well or something like that. They built this whole crazy narrative that was baseless. And then ironically, uh, it was at that time that they unveiled cats. Interesting. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm going to do something. Yes. This is the relevant video. If I could just show it so I can give some dates to everything. So, you know, here we're showing receipts. This was the relevant video that uh, 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 Kelly Richardson did on his channel. This was from the 7th of December. Now, 
the email that you had, the correspondence that you had, pardon me, was on the 13th. So here on the 13th, you had a correspondence with David Bunis after that We Woke Now video where they had accused you and others of bull, uh, bullying Bunis. Right. The, the correspondence continued. It, it started in, in late November and it continued on. Actually, he, yeah, he replied to me on December 3rd, but he had replied to others earlier than that. And, you know, our correspondence continued on uh, well beyond, you know, the, the, the accusations of him being bullied and all that. Right. So now that we've shown that the claims that they've made were completely baseless regarding Bunis, and we've shown that the relevant professor in Georgia, uh, Richard Katz, uh, who's in Georgia, is not the Richard Katz that they were alleging was a Tel Aviv-based professor, correct? Of Hebrew, a Tel Aviv-based professor of Hebrew. This guy is not a Hebraist. He's not a Semiticist. So it becomes even more ironic if now they're claiming like, oh, yeah, this is the guy who broke it wide open on the pews, you know? Yes, yes. Utterly sad, man. So what I'm thinking of doing now is... Uh, Yes, utterly sad. So let's go ahead and continue playing this video. Let's see what else is said. In fact, I believe we still have a clip from Kelly Richardson, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so the same thing with Richard Katz. So we started off, so, so learning our lessons from the first time, we just wanted to put some, some uh, precautions in place to protect you know, uh, Richard Katz the second time, right? Uh, and once we, we did that, they were able to find out who he was and they still call. They still went, they still executed the exact same playbook that they did on the first, on the first professor. And, and the, the odd thing is, is that, so the whole reason why, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, we didn't come right out, you know, with this information about cats, you know, to, to convalidate was, you know, one of the reasons why we didn't do that was because, you know, we wanted to, you know, not have them, you know, uh, attack them or, or call to school, stuff like that. But since they did it anyway, they took that, they took that concern off the table because they had already done it. If you know what I'm saying, like, so they had already done it. So at any point in time, we could re release this, this information. And, and I know that, um, you know, also some, some additional, um, um, I'd say, I'll just say that, um, things were said that, you know, we'll, you know, we, you know, definitely won't, you know, re release your, your, your info, you know, that wasn't me, <laughs> but I just want to say that that uh, that's that's why you know we have been silent on this because we were being the better man, so to speak, right? Being the better man. But as we go through this awakening, you know, as we're you know pulling out this information, you know, you know, if if, if you know, you asked me to like the last time I was on your your call, uh, sister, I don't know if you remember or not, but you asked the panel, you know, what do you think your calling is in the awakening? Mm -hmm. You know, and I told people I was like. You know, the most high, I believe, I believe the most high has me here, you know, to teach history and to, and to just utterly destroy the lies, right? You know, I believe that's my call. So now is the time to put this, this you know, this, um, this thing to bed, right, family? So. Wow. So what they did was strong arm them. Arm them. Yeah. They need to hold back the truth. It's almost like what, what the mafia would do. If they want you to shut up, they're going to shut you up. Yep. And that's exactly the approach that they took. They literally called the professor, validated that he was who he was. Exactly. Validated that he interacted or val possibly validated he interacted with uh with with uh Maury, Maury Brown. Right. Made, and then started bombarding the administrative office to say he is interacting with black Hebrew Israelites. Right. The In radical, the radical. Black Hebrew. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Radical. And, so you, 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 and no one wants to be tied with a radical group. I don't. Exactly. No one wants to. So they <laughs> literally did that. And when yeah. they did it, like I said, the game plan was now we're going to take this to the very platform where all of them are. Right. And that goes on Brand. Brand is that one platform that the Israelites, the committed community and the Christian community are all on one right. time or another. And we're going right. to use him as the voice. Wow. Yep. Yep. And you, and you think about it. I, I just want our, our, you know, our listeners to kind of put that into remembrance. Like 
think about like all the all the video lives that they done about it, all the you know the 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 web pages that they had done about it, all knowing all along that he's which is he's been out there for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like since since uh, 2016, he's been out there all this time, just <laughs> you know out you know out there. But but they've been kind of running with the story because you know. Somebody, you know, we couldn't find them. I guess that was that was the whole thing. Said, so, oh, we you can't find them, you can't find them, even though they found them, but leave that one alone. But uh you know what I find fascinating is that uh we found him a long time ago and his name is William Brown. <laughs> Brown the rich cat, and yet here they are talking about uh yeah, we found them. A, a Georgia-based professor who is not the Richard Katz that they were alleging was the Richard Katz in Tel Aviv, right? Because let's be on record about this. They claimed that the professor was a Tel Aviv-based Hebrew professor. And mm -hmm. here they tried to find some random Richard Katz who is a PhD in linguistics, but ironically enough, is not a professor of Hebrew. And as far as we know, uh, has no teaching in Tel Aviv, nothing that we can find on any of his, uh, for example, in his LinkedIn, there's nothing saying that he taught at Tel Aviv. Much less taught Hebrew. He's, he's not, he doesn't list Hebrew amongst the languages that he's proficient in, you know? Right. And, and we're not saying that he taught at Tel Aviv University, that he hasn't taught in Israel, in Tel Aviv, in that area at all. And like, it's 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 ridiculous. It, it's it's a completely different guy. He's not even in the same continent. He's not even in the same hemisphere, and he's not even in the same field. You know, there's a completely there's a there's a stark difference between a guy who's a professor of Hebrew and a guy whose degrees are in Germanic languages like English and Gothic. Right. Interesting. So uh, I think we should uh, play our good friend, the uh, quote unquote doctor. Dr. Richardson, and uh, see what he had to say about all this. I, I imagine uh, the spin doctory is going to be in full effect, but uh, let's listen. Good. You know, so yeah, definitely. And uh, I, I tell you, this was a great interview, uh, great uh, hearing the things that were shared. And um, I just, uh, even with the uh, thing that you share with uh, Richard Katz and what many people don't understand, which I tried to explain, many don't understand the confidentiality with pastors. If uh, uh, Moray uh, Brown would have released this information with him telling him not to do so, he could have gotten in trouble. You, you could be sued, you know, and many people don't know that aspect of being a pastor. And so, and I support a 100% uh, from the beginning for not disclosing that information, because I, I really believe even if, he decided to say, hey, I'm going to show you, I'm gonna, let me put his information out there. Uh, the, then the, the, the question would have been, or the response would have been, well, we only did it, he only did it because we made him do it. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it would have never been, uh, it, it would still would have been ongoing no matter what. So that was, uh, that was great what you are presented on, um, Benaya. Actually, everything you presented tonight was on, was on point. Well, because, yeah, because, um, um, you know, I, I had information, I mean, you know, just by, you know, I, I've had information on, on cats as well. And I've just been sitting on it. It's, it's, it's almost like, you know, I haven't been moved to release it. You know what I mean? Like it just, it, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, how can I put it? I mean, it just wasn't a thing for me. Right. Until, you know, we, you know, we get closer to the, you know, movie release and, 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 re uh, taking a deeper dive into, into Savannah. And I guess also, um, you know, also kind of seeing uh, Israel at large kind of, uh, you know, get sucked in. I, I, I guess I kind of started, started seeing people kind of get sucked into it. And I'm, and from my perspective, I'm like, all right, let me go and save my brother. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me go and throw him a lifeline before, before he gets in too deep. You know what I'm saying? It's like, let me go ahead and, you know, it's almost like the, um, like the watchman on the wall, you know, uh, he delivers himself, you know, when he, when he, when he warns the flock, you know, um, so, you know, I'm just do, doing my, um, my, my due diligence and, um, you know, you know, I, I'm not, I'm blessed to not have been in the, the uh, situation that, that cousin uh, majors is in and that, you know, I'm a little bit more free to, um, to share things, but at the same time, I, I do want to honor people's, you know, privacy 
And so that's why I, that's why I stuck to what was publicly released by, you know, by Katz himself, you know. Yeah, um, and you know, too, when I would try to mention to Berean that um, y'all don't understand what y'all did to Bunis, why would he ever, ever give Katz up? I'm like, you know, y'all didn't almost destroy Bunis' reputation and his job. And I'm like, but they didn't want to listen. That's why I was like, there's nothing else to say. All right, let's pause it there. That's just preposterous. So there, there we have basically the whole panel endorsing this idea that we harassed Bunis, which is just complete falsehood. You, you destroyed David Bunis's reputation. Ne nearly so, destroyed his reputation in job so, so based much, on nothing. So much so that he continued to correspond with you via email. <laughs> yeah, they, they created that narrative. And what's funny is they created that narrative first and foremost to distract from the fact, as we said, that they misrepresented Bunis. That's first, you know, back in the days when they were claiming they had a scholar backing an entire sentence. And, you know, it's funny that, you know, uh, uh, what's his name? Benaya said that, you know, oh, we, there were multiple professors that were saying, oh, yeah, it looks like Hebrew, looks like Hebrew. But where are these professors? You know, and so I think then on top of that, now they use that same narrative to justify having secret scholars. So now they can just attribute it, you know, attribute whatever they want. <laughs> to a scholar, you know, and you know, and, you, you know, but the, the fascinating thing about this is that uh, they were sitting on this information all this time, even though we had already addressed the allegation that was made by the uh, plumber, even though the plumber himself uh, never claimed that that was the actual cats. He, he simply presented it to say, like, he, he was under the assumption that we couldn't find anybody named Richard Katz, right, with a PhD. And Yet these guys took that information and spin doctored it into, no, this is the cats. Character. This is the guy, and he asked Brown not to share his information. Come on. I mean, it's, but all right, we'll, we'll see where this goes, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just, it's really hard to take seriously. I mean, this is, in, in my opinion, utterly shameful. I, I think this is shameful. And I, I say that with uh, no disrespect in mind. But I do want to call the situation for what it is. This is just utterly outlandish. But yeah, I mean that that pretty much sums it up, you know. And we'll 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 be having more discussions relevant to this, you know, and relevant to language on the pews shortly. <laughs> so with that being said, let me kind of give a brief synopsis and you can piggyback off of it. So they initially introduced a scholar, David Boone, a natural scholar, who they claimed endorsed their reading of take a, gra take a Grasp of Yah, Israel with a bass voice, correct? And that seemed to fall flat on his face once we actually started to correspond with David Boone and we discovered that David Boone never actually endorsed that phrase, correct? Correct, correct. After that occurred, it seemed to be the case that William Brown then went out of his way to invent a scholar by the name of Richard Katz. He passed himself off as a Tel Aviv-based professor uh, named Richard Katz. And once that was discovered, then it just seemed to be the case that uh, the uh, accusations started to come out, uh, that we had somehow bullied Bunis and bullied uh, Katz. In fact, before uh, the uh, William Brown... Uh, Richard Katz fiasco went down, they were already accusing us of bullying and bonus. So it seemed to be the case that once the Richard Katz thing f blew up in their face, they had a convenient excuse because they had already accused us of bullying and bonus. So now they could easily say that we, uh, quote unquote, bullied Katz. And that this is the reason he's disappearing. <laughs> right. And now, how many months later, they're resurfacing with the allegation that oh no, Richard Katz actually exists because obviously Berean has been on their case big time in exposing the fact that they had made up a Tel Aviv-based professor. And it seems that because he's been give, giving them so much heat as of late, they finally decided to try to make a haphazard, uh, I, I want to say uncareful appeal to that Georgia scholar that we had already addressed back in December, correct? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, they, they probably would have been better off not going down this road. If anything, they're reopening interest in the subject, you know? But yeah, 
<laughs> they've reopened the cat's case and uh, it's 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 sad but interestingly uh, you know initially we attributed everything to william brown and as time went on you know we were very open to the possibility that kelly richardson was not in on it as time went on we have wondered aloud about the possibility that Kelly Richardson may have been in on it from the start as well. Uh, but we've never, you know, said that that's the case because obviously we have no way of knowing. But Kelly Richardson seems to have misinterpreted that and says that we've, we've accused him of, of being in on it when we haven't. We've merely, you know, wondered if that's a possibility. But, you know, since he's brought that up and claimed that we've accused him, it is worthwhile to, you know, consider just a couple of points that at least you know, raise the question. They, they justify wondering. They, they justify uh, contemplating the possibility. I was wondering if you could put that on the screen. Okay, so here's two points that are worth considering, right? First, point number one, the Cats persona debuted on Kelly Richardson's channel. It wasn't William Brown who unveiled it on his channel. It, it, the Cats persona was first unveiled on Kelly Richardson's channel on December 7th. Point number two, and, and for me, this is very interesting. They, you know, both uh, Kelly and the Cats persona, they both exhibited uh, comparable grasps of the Hebrew language as within the same time period, which is, you know, within around the time of late autumn of 2020, both Cats and Kelly, independently of each other, showed a misunderstanding of Hebrew plurals in the construct state and claimed that, you know, B'nai, like within the phrase B'nai Yisrael, that Beit Nun Yot means son in the singular. Singular That came up in the cat's emails, and we also have footage of Kelly teaching that independently of the cat's emails. So now, as, as you see on your screen, the position that we would take is that doesn't prove that Kelly was in on it from the start, but if he sincerely and innocently thought that cats was real, that in itself would entail a profound lack of intellectual curiosity on his part. You know, it, it begs the question of how come he never, you know, asked his cousin in private about, you know, this, uh, this source. And, uh, but moreover, it includes a curious uh, coincidence, you know, to put it mildly, the fact that they both taught that Beit Nun Yod means uh, son in the singular. And uh, there's also a question of how adverse our friend might be to bestowing, uh, you know, unmerited doctorates. <laughs> but that's a discussion for another time. But no, we don't accuse Kelly Richardson of necessarily being involved from the start, but we do wonder if that's a possibility. And it, it could be plausible that in some capacity, he is trying to cover up for what his cousin did. Oh, well, there's, there's no doubt in my mind at this point that they know that he knows that there's no Tel Aviv based professor named Richard Katz who wrote to William Brown. I mean, he knows that's the case by now. I'm confident of that. Indeed. Indeed. And it's unfortunate that uh, a discussion on the Georgia pews had to take this turn due to uh, what I would call the uh, disingenuousness of people from that side. It's rather unfortunate, uh, but hopefully moving forward, uh, we can continue to have these discussions sans the, uh, you know, the deception, I would hope, on their side. Because obviously we have been transparent on our end. We're hoping that they can start being transparent on their end. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, they're going to use this to, uh, I think it's very clear now, they're going to use it as an excuse to not be transparent. It's this whole fiasco now where, you know, uh, Kelly Richardson is invoking all sorts of secret scholars, you know, and uh, some of the claims that are coming out are looking very curious. But we'll see where this goes. Maybe <laughs> we'll have something to say on it in the future. I can assure you of that. Indeed. Indeed. So with that being said, uh, we're going to end it here. God bless you all. I hope this has edified someone out there. And until next time, take care.